Well, Steven, I would say that I am thirsty, but I got uh, all of that taken care of drinking the Tennessee Tears. <laughs> I was wondering where that was going. As okay. they uh, left the arena with a minute to go, not knowing like what was about to happen in that final yeah. minute, and we won't like really get into the nitty gritty of what happened there, kind of basically the same thing that happened down in Starkville. That's not fun, we don't wanna talk about all that. <laughs> But we do want to talk about Kentucky solidifies its status as a double bye team in the SEC tournament. All of that, that stress and pressure That's of all I wanted. All that stress and pressure of damn, are we going to have to play on Thursday in Nashville? They're all gone. All of those worries are gone because Kentucky took care of business. And is this Thompson Bowling Arena or is it Food City Mart or whatever the hell this place is called? I don't know. I've been calling it they, TBA they, the whole they, day. They, they keep changing the name of it, but whatever this venue is. Kentucky left with a victory, beating this ugly, god-awful shade of orange comfortably for basically the entirety of the 40 minutes, which is basically what the narrative was leaving Lexington the first time around, that Tennessee led all 40 minutes and, mm -hmm. you know, Kentucky was manhandled, they didn't have the physicality. It was basically that same game, part two, just flipped completely. Did you envis envision this thing being a rock fight to start with Kentucky just digging its heels in defensively and just throwing haymaker after haymaker after haymaker on the defensive end in the first half before Reed Shepard and Antonio Reeves really got things rolling the second half offensively? No. No, I didn't. Uh, Kentucky gave up, what, 103 points to Tennessee in Rupp sure Arena. Did. They held, held them to 29 in the first half. So, you know, mm. you, you go into the halftime, you're like, this mm. is a completely different game. It kind of, it was it made me think of the Arkansas series this year. You play them in Fayetteville, 63 to 57. You score 111 in, in Rupp Arena. So just like, it's like two totally different games, even though the, it's the same teams playing. But then the second half, like you said, the guards get going. Uh, 52 points. Uh, for each for each team in the second half, and that's that was, that was what I was expecting to see the entire game. But credit guys like Ugana Onyenso. How about him? Uh, what did he play? Thirty something minutes? Did he play thirty minutes and, and didn't take a shot? But he twenty nine minutes, zero for zero from the field, <laughs> but six rebounds and several blocks. Too. Several blocks. Yeah, four blocks. four blocks for for Ugo. Yeah, I mean that's it's kind of crazy that you could play 29 minutes of a basketball game and not shoot the ball. Not even look at the rim, honestly. Not no, even one single and, time. And, 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 and you know that's uh, the bigs. I mean, I think out of all four of the bigs, I think they got uh, combined zero points out of them. That's a really wild stat. That is pretty crazy. And then they still won the game. And like you said, if you we can, I'm gonna I'm gonna not talk. I wanted to talk a little bit about the ending of the game, but I, I agree. Let's just keep the vibes. Vibes are too good. Vibes are too good. Why, why yeah. do we need to talk about I'm just going to black it out and act like it didn't happen. Why, let's just, the moment that Kentucky was up 11 points with 55 seconds left, let's just talk about that. Like yeah, that, game, that That's games. when the game is over. That's when we start seeing uh, the fans. And let me tell you, the fans were so whiny. They were mm. complaining and just pissy. There was one behind me that came down from his seat to the little security guard this old man sweet old man came up and said this kentucky fan was behind me and after every single made shot he keeps patting me on the head and touching my hair and i'm just letting you know sir next time he does it i'm gonna be very angry i was like buddy why do you sound like a four-year-old child it's a rivalry game grow what are up. you doing and I will say, if it was after every made three, I bet that dude's hair was just touched constantly because Kentucky absolutely torched the freaking net, St Stephen. Can you believe just the heater that Antonio Reeves, Reed Shepard, shoot, Justin Edwards in the first half. How about freaking Justin Edwards? It felt How like everything Kentucky threw up fell in this arena. I could I could not believe the offensive three-point success. I think at one point, I don't know what the final number ended up being, but there was at one point that Kentucky had more made, I think they finished that way too, yeah, more <laughs> made yeah. three-pointers than they did made twos. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at that. 27 uh, field goals, 15 of them from behind the arc. That is dumb. Yeah. That is dumb. But there was the point where like every time Kentucky let go over three, I just, that's going in. No and matter, it was four or five feet it. beyond the three-point line. Like yeah. it wasn't wide open. It was highly contested, gutsy, ridiculous, just Reed Shepard launcher from the 606 and just drill. <laughs> it was insanity some of the shots Kentucky was hitting. Yeah. And you know we can talk about the three-point shooting and we are. Uh, Reed Shepard, seven threes. I think that ties his career high. Oh uh, Antonio Reeves shot. Well, I think Justin Edwards hit four threes. I mean, you could tell the bench every single time I was sitting there right over here. I was sitting right there. And every time a three went up, I mean, there was like a shock that it, if a one didn't go in. Uh, but Antonio Reeves has added something to his game that I'm I'm really loving. His ability to get 
to the basket. There were some Ooh. big time buckets that he got that were tough finishes at the rim. And I'm like, it's, I'm so used to watching, I should be used to this now, but I'm, I'm used to a whole other season of watching Antonio play where he's just a three point threat. And so in these big crucial moments, I'm not really thinking like, I want Antonio driving to the basket. But I got to change that mindset because, I mean, he is lethal on the, on those drives. In every six games, there's one baseline drive where he goes up and he just punches it on somebody's head, and you're like, mm -hmm. you forget that that dude got he has some bounce to him. It's, he never he, gets a foul call either. You want to talk about that? Let's you talk about. Talk that. Let's about talk that? about that. I I I don't want to personally complain about the officiating, I but the, what I'm going to complain about is how delusional some of these fans were listening to them try to dissect the game in real time. I know it's a little challenging for some of them, but trying to dissect the game in real time and complaining about every single call that Tennessee like got called on him, not realizing that we damn near had Brennan Canada getting minutes because of how <laughs> many guys were dealing with foul trouble. It was mm -hmm. insanity, the total amount of touch calls that Tennessee got on its behalf. And then every time Antonio, you know, somebody drives to the rim and gets murdered, like they just so happen to blow the whistle and Tennessee fans are like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. I'm like, are you watch? Are we watching the same game? Yeah. Do you understand For the real. level of contact and physicality that is being played in how it's being called. I'm not going to complain about the officiating. It sucked. But I'm not going to complain about it because the result was what it was. But I could not imagine being on Tennessee's side and watching it unfold and think, you know what? I think that we're at a disadvantage. It was a 20 to 16 uh spread between those two and in the first half I think it was like 13 to 2 it was 13 free, to two, free yeah, throw it, it, they had every opportunity in the first half to run away with that thing because of the way the game was called so I don't want to hear about it stop complaining you guys were whining from the opening buzzer uh, it, it that part made the tears taste so much yeah. better and watching you guys whine and cry out of the arena it was beautiful I'm so happy that I got to see you guys sad it was it was a beautiful occasion on this home floor it just it and something about it yes. they they found some success down here yeah and they they're the SEC champs um, we'll find out to what happens credit. in Nashville. Yeah. Oh, no, this is probably the best Tennessee team in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have an, a superstar that I don't – I mean – 40 ball. Yeah. Dawn Connect. Dawn Connect is – I mean, I, I got nervous every time that dude even touched the ball because I just felt like he's going to find a way to score. I mean, he's he's somebody I haven't really seen in a Tennessee uniform maybe since, like, Chris Lofton, totally different player, but yeah. just his ability to score. But uh, talking about the fans, I did talk with several, several students before the game. Some people said they were here since 11 a.m. Did they cry? Uh, were they, they, were, they, they were a little upset. They were, you know, they were trying to even. say, we got bigger games to, to look forward to. Bigger games. They're going to add to that the banners out here, they said. Um, yeah, you guys took down the NIT banners. That's so sweet. I, I, I was, I was, I was coming I, in here. That's what I come here for. I was coming in here looking for the, the Sweet 16 and Elite 8 banners, and I, there's just nowhere to be found anymore. I don't know if it's because you guys got bullied and, you know, bullied into oblivion, but I, I, I was hoping and, and excited mm -hmm. to see, man, you guys have really honored some obscure things here, but I guess when you haven't won anything of substance and haven't made it to a Final Four, Rick Barnes, again, if this is the best Tennessee team that Rick Barnes has had and he doesn't make a Final Four with this oh, one, he's gonna he's hear never, about he it. is never going to he's make gonna a Final he, Four that's, ever. That, that's going to be – like this fan base is going to – if they don't make a Final Four with this team, really – I mean, They never will. Yeah. Well, yeah, and like this, that's, this fan base is going to have to eat it for – because, I, I mean, like, yeah, you're right. I mean, like, th this is the best chance. You might luck into one. FAU has made a Final Four, Jack. FAU made a Final Four. I mean, it's not – I mean, it's hard, but FAU has made a Final Four. Miami made a Final Four last year. San Diego State made a Final Four. So, but, but aside from that, we were t I don't want to keep talking about the officiating, but, and I definitely don't want to talk about the last 55 seconds. However, if we can combine those two, double jeopardy. Is it okay to talk about it? Because That's fair. That's fair. DJ Wagner being on the bench there with, I mean, he got some ticky-tack foul calls, and that hurt Kentucky and that being about on the bench. had Cal about got ejected. That was. Oh, yeah. That was as passionate. I think I've seen Cal. I, I, I kind of thought there was a moment that he was looking to get thrown out. He's just trying to get his player checked into the game, and they're not blowing the horn. And he's just yelling to get his, get Rob Dillingham into the game for Antonio Reeves. And yeah, I, I, I thought that was just like what what time like was he? Did they call him for being out of the coach's box, or was it a, initially he got a, he got a coach's got box a warning, warning for that. and then he's one of those again. I, I think he was just very politely trying to make it clear <laughs> that hey guys. I have a guy that's ready to check in. Can you please 
allow him to thank you in advance, and I appreciate all you do. I think that's all he was saying. Um, yeah. You know, I posted yeah, uh, I think the, that's the clip on, on Twitter. I was, I'm a good mouth reader. I think that's what he was saying. So, uh, you know what? A coming, uh, overcoming all odds, they were able to uh, just establish an 11-point lead with a minute left in the game where, again, there was not a single time that it truly felt beyond, like, the last – couple seconds. How did you feel when that three went up to tie it? I know we were, we're not talking about this, but, it, but it, just... Areas were tight of my <laughs> body. Like, I'm not going to just dig into the details, but some of them yeah. were tight. The, we'll just leave it at that. It, it got very, very tense. Very, very... It's hard to describe kind of the emotions in here because of how loud it was, mm -hmm. how, you know, we got some Go Big Blue chants. There were a couple pockets of UK fans. Yeah. Every, you know, I don't know where they came from because it looked like there were like four or five just scattered in every little section, but it kind of got loud every once in I'd a say, while. Uh, just yeah. up in that section, there was like, from that in there, a couple hundred from that, that section to over here. I mean, they, they all kind of came, they started to come down when the game, when, as the Tennessee fans left, they kind of filtered down to the Is there bottom. anything better than a Go Big Blue chant in the final minute of a game as the opposing fans leave because we've now got it i don't, I don't want to like jinx us and i'm certainly not going to talk about what's to come in the future and all that but this is three straight trips that we got go big blue chance for the just the two of us that we got to witness on an opposing team's home floor it's so Wasn't that awesome? It's it, awesome there's nothing like that feeling. i've got to experience it here now two years in a row and that's what i talked to some of the when i talked to the fans before the game they said that the fans want this one they said actually what this is what they told me they said fans have been coming out for basketball games all year obviously they've been good but they said it hasn't been like this the energy hasn't been like this and we talked about this when we were at mississippi state we talked about it at auburn i mean calipari talked about not being kentucky good he talked about that at sec media day but it, it really doesn't matter. I mean, that's the Kentucky effect. They Tennessee fans wanted this game. This game, as Cal said in the post game, it didn't mean as much for them as it did for Kentucky. But their fans wanted this one. They wanted the season sweep of Kentucky. They got it in 2018, but only to see Kentucky beat them in the SEC championship, uh, SEC championship game. So there could be a rematch. And, you know, these two teams, this is as, as good as this rivalry has been. It's, it, I it's, mean, it's, yeah, it's fun bitter. that you could see the, the hatred in the Tennessee fans' faces, and I love it. I love it. It makes the win so much better. I, I honestly can't believe it. I'm on cloud nine again. I can't believe we're coming out of here, walking out of here with the win again. And guess what? I get to be happy on the car ride home. It's, I'm, I can't wait for the car ride home because of the result of this. It's just I, it's the little things in life, guys. Like I, I, I really, I really, you know. The car rides home from ugly losses are about as miserable as they get. So yes. on the flip side, just so imagine the misery on that side the, on, on a big win. Imagine how good that feels. So that's what we get to experience on our way home. I don't want to end this before just, you know, everybody talks about Antonio Reeves. Everybody talks about Reed Shepard. They deserve all the love in the world. But Justin Edwards, mm -hmm. what he was able to do on this gym, the confidence that he showed, the things he just kept reaching into his bag and pulling new tricks out. And you were like, where did that come from? Confidence. I haven't seen that ever. The confidence that that kid is playing with right now in – I'm sure you guys have seen the moment of Stacy Shepard coming up and just giving him a big old bear hug after the game. It, that's what this is about. That's mm -hmm. what Kentucky basketball is about. That's why we do what we do, because that's a kid that has talked very openly about the mental health struggles he's gone through, that he hit some lows and had to deal, you know, go talk to mental health coaches and really kind of get to the root of some of these struggles. And for him to be able to go out and play the way he did on this floor, if you will recall, Justin Edwards picked Kentucky over Tennessee, and Tennessee was the heavy, heavy, heavy favorite. He talked about that after the after the win, that he came very, very close. He thought that this was going to be his home. In fact, when the team arrived here, they talked about like, hey, Justin, this, you know, this was going to be your home floor. We're in jo Justin's home territory. And, you know, Justin obviously kind of played it off and was like, no, nah, man. But he talked very openly about how close he was to being at Tennessee. So for him in this moment, that was a sink or swim moment, Stephen. Like that could have been really easy for him to see the lights. And, you know, this is a, a big, big venue. I know he's used to Rupp, but this is the rival territory, the team that he picked, you know, that he went against to pick his, you know, his, his Kentucky Wildcats. So for him in that moment to do what he was able to do, man, like that's the beauty of college basketball. Yeah. I'm rooting for Justin Edwards so, so hard to just continue to take these steps forward. And, you know, I don't think he's 
he was projected as the number one pick coming into the year, and he hasn't become that yet. But he's starting to look like the player we all kind of dreamed he could become oh, yeah. at some point. It took a little bit longer, but for him to finally get this moment and do it in this environment of all places, man, that's 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 what college basketball is all about. Yeah, to do it in front of the the fans that he thought he was you know was going to be playing in front of for the uh, entire season. And I didn't realize I'm looking at the statue here. I didn't realize he only sat out three minutes. Uh, him and uh, is it Reeves that played 37 minutes Both a piece? Of them. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we're at a point now where you can't get Justin off the floor. He's, I mean, on the defensive end, he's doing good things. He had six rebounds. He had three assists. You know, he's staying out of foul trouble, so you're able to – He's. I mean, he's somebody that – it's getting to a point with him now that when he sets up to shoot a three, I'm thinking bottoms every time. I mean, there, you go down the lineup now, and I, I, I talked with somebody after the immediately after the game, and they said, like, expectations now are going way up because – I'm looking at this lineup, and if everybody starts, you get something from the bigs, and this could really be something. I mean, what seed does Kentucky? That's is this, this is the biggest win of the season for Kentucky, for sure. So, what does this do anything for seeding? Is there a chance they jump a seed? Well, line? they were already the number one four seed. Okay. In the nation. Um, now you're pretty comfortably, I think, in that three seed line. I that's think incredible. That's, I think that's what they did, and. Now that you've locked up the two seed in Nashville, then you can start kind of piecing together what the route looks like. And, you know, if you can win Friday, if you can win Saturday, and if those are, qual- you know, if they can sneak into quad one opportunities, obviously that Saturday matchup would be mm-hmm. no matter what, then you could really start talking about this team as a firm three seed, kind of controlling its destiny with locations and, you know, not just kind of a, a leftover that gets sent out west just for the sake of doing it. Like, they've kind of earned themselves a say in where they end up going, and that's what – that's what we talked about. You just just put yourself in position. Don't get mm-hmm. don't don't drop to an eight seed when things were kind of teetering a little bit. Just put yourself in position to be in the conversation, yeah. and that's exactly what they've done. They are now very firmly on that three seed line and playing the best basketball of the year. You want your team, the, Kentucky, needs to be playing its best basketball by the end of the year under John Calipari. That's just his mo. That's been his mo. That's what he was able to do. That this team was able to do. Rick Barnes, you know, mentioned it very clearly before the game started and said, "We understand that Cal's teams kind of play at their best right now, so we know we're going to get their best shot." And even still, considering those things, th- they were able to come in here and do that. So life is good. Very, you know, when, in terms of the postseason seating and all that, we'll find out. You know, obviously, you have to take care of business in Nashville, but. They have now put themselves in the conversation, and that's all you that's all you you ask for with this with this team. Yeah, I mean a three seed, you get a fourteen in the first round. That I mean, you know, avoid avoid an upset, and and you know, you you really. I mean, I didn't think after that loss to Gonzaga that there was a chance that they could get anything better than even a five. I thought like a five was a pipe dream. They've now won, I think, what's uh, seven of eight? Is that is that right? Yep, uh, seven since of that, eight since that game, and and the only loss was the buzzer, buzzer beater, beater in Baton Rouge. So I mean, like they're they're red hot right now. Um, take I love the momentum that this is. This also just what it does for the fan base, what it does for everybody getting excited. For everybody was already excited. I, I don't think a loss would have deflated the fan base all that much. A win though, just I mean, people are gonna be fired up in Nashville. Cal's gonna be fired up in Nashville. You heard his comments after. He loves the SEC tournament. He said it was so important for this program. Yeah. That- I, what, what, you as the diehard fan that you are, what did you make of Cal saying that there's only one tournament that matters? Four if, days before we go to Nashville. Well, if Calipari, Calipari is way too competitive to just be like, I don't care if I win or lose. So whatever he's going to say, uh, and maybe he wants to take some pressure off the players. And, and it's a weird tournament. You know, no other tournament do you play three games in three days. So I get that as a fan. I want to win it. Uh, Kentucky hasn't done it since 2018. I want to. I want a trophy at the end. Of, you know, there's. It, what did Mark Stoops say? They give. If they give you a trophy at the end of this, it's something to play for. Whatever he said. But that's basically how I think. Like, you know, I've always said that uh, there's three things in the Kentucky season that if you want to call it a great season, you got to do SEC regular season, SEC tournament, or an Elite Eight. Um, you fell just short. But this is the highest Kentucky finish in the SEC uh, since I think like since COVID, Ooh. finishing second. So uh, assuming that. Uh, Assuming that the other games, I think Georgia, Auburn, Auburn had to win, I think. So assuming that happened, Kentucky finished second. I want them to win the SEC tournament. I think most fans do. I've, uh, I've only been to one SEC tournament in my life. It was last year, so I haven't seen a win yet. So I would like to at least see Saturday, and then let's build from there. 
It's gonna be a lot of fun. We are very much looking forward to it. It's gonna be a blast in Nashville this week, but some future news to talk about as well. Carter mm -hmm. Knox, brother of five-star former Kentucky Wildcat, Kevin Knox, is a Kentucky Wildcat. He Whoa. announces his commitment what a tonight, day. like 30 minutes after Kentucky huh. beat Tennessee. Awesome, like, hour stretch there. Um, what do you make, you know, for keeping it in the family? Uh, Carter Knox, brother of Kevin Knox, decides that, you know, he wants to follow in his brother's footsteps to Lexington. La Familia. Uh, I, I, we saw him play it at OT OTE. Uh, I like his game. Um, man, that's, what a day for Kentucky fans. Isn't that wild? I did not think Carter Knox was coming to Kentucky, honestly. Yeah. I know we had talked and, it was, you know, you know more stuff. You're involved in all that. But I, it was a little – so – I mean, did you? I guess you knew before there, there was something coming it, down the The last 24 hours, it's been very much pro-Kentucky, but leading up to that, there were people around the Louisville program that thought he's Weird. already privately committed to Kenny Payne, and that was going to be the reason why Kenny Payne saved his job. I think the inevitable, I think everybody they involved in today. knew that that wasn't going to do much, and it was kind of a waste of everybody's time from a PR perspective. There was some hot and heavy buzz about him maybe doing a post-grad year at OTE, just kind of just sticking with the the, the pro route. Um, but for Kentucky to continue adding, you know, pieces, just building the foundation of this this recruiting class, it's top two in the nation behind Duke. Uh, that's your sixth edition. You you know, the headliners, obviously, Jaden Quaints and Boogie Flan. Um, and, you know, if you can have Carter Knox, who's a firm top 15 player in the country, long, kind of athletic, skilled, physical, uh, you know, kind of stretch three, four, small ball four, that's a guy that's versatile. Cal likes these versatile wings, and that's just another guy that that should fit complementary, you know, a complementary fit alongside Billy Richman, who's more defensive oriented. Carter Knox definitely more offensive oriented. He's doing amazing things right now in the OTE playoffs, averaging 24 points a game. Led the EYBL in scoring this past cycle. So that's a big get for Kentucky, especially just in terms of sheer numbers, because Cal clearly wants to. Look what's look what's working with this group mm -hmm. right now. Going all in on the the young freshman that you can kind of mold into a long term project success that that you know he's done so well with. Not going above and beyond in the transfer portal. That's definitely what he wanted to you know. You got to add some age and some some leadership, but he wants the foundation of this roster to be you know all of his rosters moving forward to be young five star talent. And he added yet another one on Saturday, thirty minutes after he beats Rick Barnes down in in Knoxville. So a very good day for John Calipari, I would say. Yeah, and uh, you know uh, we brought, got Rob Dillingham from OTE, so Samto Cyril as well. Samto, little, yeah. you got a little uh, pipeline going there. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I Jordan love, Burks, I love what they're Jordan Burks. How do we forget about Jordan Burks? Uh, I, I, I love what they're doing down there. I always love going. To to their events uh, now I've been a couple times so maybe you know at Carter Knox welcome to the family welcome you know the, yeah I like the OTE to uh, Lexington pipeline well it's been a heck of a Saturday I know it has been for you guys as well we are going to now make the trek back to Lexington it's been a blast down here in Knoxville glad that we get to go home with a win and now it feels so good to say that we will see you on Friday down in Nashville <laughs> yes